Hey everybody, this is Lori Schulweis. And I'm Jen Giamma. And welcome to another episode of Everybody Talks, the podcast where we like to explore the wide world of wellness. Yep, every week we'll answer a different question from nutrition and exercise to mindfulness and self-care and any other trendy buzzword that crosses our path. Sometimes we're lucky enough to have some of our favorite experts on, sometimes we just talk to each other, but we're always talking to you. So let's get started. We're excited about today's guest. Yes. She has more than three decades of experience building the leadership and execution capabilities of companies to deliver growth and profitability on a global scale. She is a tech veteran, entrepreneur, investor, and a philanthropist who spent the early part of her career at Oracle Corporation, most recently as vice president of U.S. Revenue, where she created systems that allowed the company to create one of the most productive sales forces in corporate history. Her advocacy support to hundreds of organizations and dozens of scholars and social entrepreneurs is dedicated to protecting the young and promoting the socioeconomic growth and advancement of individuals. And she's here today to talk to us um, about January AI. So she's the founder and CEO of January AI, which is a precision um, health tech company that harnesses the power of artificial intelligence to prevent, predict, postpone, and manage chronic diseases. Uh, she's here to talk to us today about that technology yeah. and how January AI is helping people understand their bodies and optimize their health and longevity, which is what we are all about here exactly. on this podcast. So, so please welcome Nusheen Hashemi. Welcome uh, to you. Everybody Talks. We love having you here. Um, I feel like we introduced you, but is there anything we left out or anything? <laughs> I think that people hear AI in a title and they are right away a little frightened, but... <laughs> Um, but is there anything else you want to share about yourself or, um, no, anything we have left I'm, out? No, just that I, I have a lot of, uh, spears in my back when you're a pioneer, you know, you have to, um, you start things way before, um, they're popular. So it's yeah. generally really, really hard to get started. So trying to recruit machine learning people in 2017 to work on health was, was really ridiculous. Like nobody actually took that seriously because, you know, um, people were using uh, data science to look at big data, like maybe data and electronic health records, or maybe, um, you know, uh, insurance kind of logs of people, but nobody was looking at the, the body, you know, the per like applying AI to the body and understanding the body. Um, and so it was such a new concept that people just generally kind of listened to it and just kind of walked away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> and so, um, yeah, so getting started, uh, was really a big challenge trying to convince people, no, we can, we can essentially people are wearing these wearables now, these wearables are very powerful and people yeah. are wearing their, um, fitness trackers. These are becoming more like medical devices all the time. They're becoming you know, smarter, they can track more, more, more things. And as you wear more of these wearables, um, we can collect a lot of information frictionlessly, passively over yeah. a long period of time, longitudinally. So yeah. once you have a lot of data that you've collected on people over a long period of time, passively, they don't have to do anything, they don't have to enter anything or anything, then you can machine learn on this data and like find patterns and find blips and you can see where things are going. And so we were really interested in doing this um, and putting essentially continuous glucose monitors on healthy people, just on any people. Um, yeah. They had been really reserved for type one and more advanced type two um, diabetes. And we thought, hey, you know, managing your blood sugar is something everyone could benefit from because half of the adult U.S. population has pre-diabetes or diabetes today, yeah, right now, yeah, 133 yeah. million people. Wow, wow. Can, let's just go back. Can I just go back to like a little bit about your background? I mean, you didn't plop down and think of this all on your own. Like, how did you? What's your little bit of your history um, well, they say that led when you, you to work here? Hard, <clears throat> sure. When you work hard, you get lucky. So a bunch mm -hmm. of things lined up that just just unbelievably beautifully. Um, my background is in software. Um, I, you mentioned Oracle in my uh, background. I spent 10 years at Oracle building mm -hmm. that company. Um, and then I um, was in a dot-com in mid nineties um, in a personal finance dot-com. I was VP of sales and marketing there. Um, that company was sold to Lycos. And then I was running a family office uh, with my husband. Um, he was a, a top executive. He was the founding CTO, chief technology officer at Yahoo. So he was very busy and um, 
uh, building the internet. <laughs> so <laughs> I was essentially running the family office and had had a couple of kids and uh, started a couple of foundations. Um, and then in, you know, when it looked like my daughter was going to graduate from high school in 2016. So in 2013, I decided, you know, I'm interested in going back to the dark side. Let's go back. I've done a lot of philanthropy <laughs> and let's go back to the dark side. So I started going into some of our portfolio companies to um, take operating roles and because uh, we had a lot of investments in different um, startups. And so it started there. And then 2016, I decided to start my own company and I fell into machine learning and healthcare, believe it or not, at Stanford University. And it was like so obvious to me. It was incredible. Like the minute wow. I heard it, it was like, that's exactly what I want to do because um, we still low, we still know so little about human health. We still yeah. know so little. Yeah. Um, and I felt that AI was going to make a complete, you know, step change. And now of course it's exponential change. It's beyond, it's, it's beyond it's any, any of anyone's so imagination, crazy. Um, but knew that it would play a role. So I was interested in multiomics, this idea of whole health, this <clears> idea <throat> of um, this idea that uh, you don't just manage a, a person's health from a single marker, you know, generally the, the medical, uh, Generally, the medical world thinks that people can't keep too many things in their head. They're not interested in changing. They're not interested in doing anything. They don't want to change their behavior. So I'll just give them one thing to work on. So Jackie, you need to work on your cholesterol. And Jamie, you need to stick to your A1C, your blood sugar is too high. And that's it. But that's not the way to manage people's health. Um, health is way more complicated than that. Um, often yeah. people have diabetes. A lot of times they have depression, for example. Um, and often these things are there are comorbidities. You know, when you have uh, metabolic syndrome, you might get heart disease, but you might also get diabetes. Um, right. And so you yeah. can't focus, and, and you can try to solve one and then break the other. Like you can give somebody a statin to lower their cholesterol, but you can actually increase their chances of diabetes. Fact. Um, so we feel that we. I felt strongly that you kind of need to take this whole whole person look and I searched and found Mike Snyder, my co-founder, and he has type 2 diabetes. So he said, let's start with type 2 diabetes. You know, multiomics is a big, big topic and people have tried it before. There were a couple of companies, um, Human Longevity had tried it, Arivel had tried it. it. They were too expensive. They were running all these expensive tests on people, but, yeah. but what they were getting was not as actionable. So we said, what can we do for the mainstream America? What can we do that where we can bring multiomics to people, but in an accessible way. Well, start with wearables. They're pretty cheap. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's throw on a let's throw on a heart rate monitor on people. Let's throw on a CGM on people. Let's see what we can learn from that. Turns out you can learn a lot. A lot. Yeah. I want to dig into that a little bit more. I mean, we know that you know our healthcare industry focuses on treatment of symptoms, and um, you know, instead of prevention and root cause um, of disease and and this technology, January AI, is really changing that. Um, I guess maybe we should, just for our listeners' sake, d explain what a CGM is. What is a continuous glucose monitor? How does it work? Just start Yeah, there. absolutely. Yeah, continuous glucose monitor is a very small patch. It's, um, it's uh, right now, the, the Abbott one that's made by Abbott um, is the size of two U.S. pennies. And... This uh, is something that goes on your arm and it does not have, there's a needle that, um, uh, if you will, is part of the um, installing of it, but does not stay in your arm. The needle leaves. It's kind of the way you go to Claire's to get your ears pierced. Something yeah. goes to your ear, but it leaves and, <laughs> yes. and it just leaves something in your ear. Well, what it leaves is like a plasticky filament that it leaves in your, in your, uh, in your skin. And that is reading interstitial fluid so it does not actually get to your blood. It's just look, and then the um, the interstitial fluid is highly correlated with your blood glucose. So it kind of figures by by deduction, by by reasoning that if it has these kinds of values, then your blood glucose must be X. Um, so that's how it actually works. It's a glucose oxidase technology. Um, so this thing goes and has certain enzyme and reads information in your, in your interstitial fluid and then deduces basically what your blood glucose level is. Okay. So that's made by Abbott. It's a great patch. We think that, you know, um, we think that these um, continuous glucose monitors are just, 
so revolutionary, even though they've been around for about two decades, uh, they haven't been so small, so easy to use. And now they are really getting smaller, smarter, and Abbott's future sensors are going to also give you your ketones. They're also going to give you your lactate, uh, wow. same sensor. So it's going to be amazing. Eventually, I'm sure it'll, it'll lead lots of other things. But um, yeah, so that that's what we're using. We January is a software company. We're an AI company. So we use the sensor. We also use your Apple Watch. Or, well, sorry, I'm wearing <laughs> something else. Because <laughs> 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 I have to talk today. Because I have to talk. I am wearing my aura. But <laughs> yes, we are. We too. we are too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your aura ring, etc. Um, so you wear those and you wear your, your CGM and we can take the combination and then we take basically some user reported data. So we want to know what are you sticking in your mouth? So we want to know, because for diabetes and metabolic health, we really want to understand what is spiking your blood sugar today in your diet? Like, what are you doing today? Yeah. It's probably not great for you. Um, right. and people have told us like athletes who are so fit, who don't really care about, um, you know, carbs and that kind of stuff have told us, oh my God, this changed everything because I was putting a whole banana on my morning smoothie. I don't need, need to do that. It was spiking the hell out of my blood sugar. I don't wow. need to do that. I don't need that stress. So half a banana, yeah. fine. Sure, half a banana, sure. I'm in the green. Yeah. Whole banana, I'm in the red. Like I don't need a whole banana. Um, so I think uh, it's, it's really uh, powerful, this combination of is insights that sort of um, lie at the intersection of data. You know, it's not yes, single data yes. doesn't do a whole lot for you, but once you mix the data together, you're like, oh. And then to mix the data, you need AI because humans, we can't sit there and mix data in our head. We can't mix, we can't go CGM yeah. data with with everything I'm getting for your, from your smartwatch and what you were eating. Like that's not human yeah, interpretable, but right. machine, very easy. Well, very not easy only that, machine. but even just people that, because Lori and I both um, wore the CGM for a few weeks just to, you know, to yeah, kind to of try it out, test that it's out. It's really see. interesting. But if you don't have that integration of the technology, you don't know what you're looking at. You don't right. know what does this information mean, right. you know? And so that I think um, there's, there, I mean, there's so many benefits to it, but, you know, from, from my perspective, just as a, um, as a health fitness nutrition coach, um, people are always asking, about weight management and weight loss and how would you say like what are the benefits of using CGM for weight management purposes absolutely yeah so uh yeah especially right now there's like such excitement out there around um these weight loss drugs you know they are so revolutionary Mm -hmm, and they are really helping they are helping people out in that um you know they're they're eliciting the kind of weight loss we've never seen before, you know, from a drug, like 24% of body weight. That's, yes. that's insane. Yes. The issue is that they do have, um, A, they're, they're, they're expensive. Insurance covers them only for a year. They're $1,000 a month. And we don't really understand if you use it. Like if you have, you know, a maybe kidney or liver predisposition um, to disease, you don't, you may not want to like use this for the rest of your life. So, um, we are really obsessed with getting people to change their lifestyle while they use it, these drugs. Mm-hmm. So if they can learn while they're on these drugs to limit the, the window in which they eat, you know, intermittent fasting, like eat within yeah. eight hours, don't eat within 16 hours, um, you know, eat in a small window and then um, generally like sleep, you know, dial your sleep and uh, make sure you walk or exercise or move or do absolutely any movement after meals. Um, so if we can get dial their lifestyle, if we can get them to eat more fiber, which is such an important factor for, for improving your blood sugar, once they're off drugs, um, they can also manage those. So, so we're interested in both weight loss and weight management. And the way that weight loss works, certainly to the extent that carbs are, um, are an important factor in weight gain or um, struggle to lose weight, uh, you can see carbs very easily with the continuous glucose monitor. So you can see that when some when a when a food spikes, it's likely because of its high carb content. So you can then try to hack that food. Maybe eat half of it, or or replace the spiking ingredient. Like mm-hmm. um, somebody walked up to my co-founder in a conference and said, "Dr. Snyder, why is my salad spiking me i just eat salad with salmon salad with salmon like why is this spiking my blood sugar he said well what are you putting in your in your salad he said well i i 
I put a healthy, healthy bit of, you know, wild salmon and I have arugula and just kept describing the lettuces. And then I drench it in balsamic vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Mike said, there you go. Yeah. Um, he said, well, it's I like even balsamic. I figured out the yeah, riddle of that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you said, but it, vinegar is good for you, right? Like wine is good for you. And people have all these conceptions, you know, like somebody asked me uh, one day, he told me, you know, I have to tell you secretly because there's such stigma around type two diabetes. I have to tell you, I can't tell anyone, you know, I have to tell you in your ear, you know, I have type two. I was like, okay, okay. I said, what are you eating for breakfast? And he said, you know, I have toast, I have orange juice. Like, like the, <laughs> and, and I, when I said, Orange juice is well known to have the highest glycemic index yes. of, of fruit. Yeah. And he said, but it's fresh squeezed. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, my God. So I was like, oh, wow. That guy has masters. is a really big job in a really big company. I think people just don't. They don't know. They don't. don't know. They don't realize I it. I was going to say that, you know, like I know if, I know a few individuals who have been on who are on these drugs Um and I'm jealous of them, but then I'm also not. I mean, I have a friend who had to come off and she's being tested, you know, she's going to a neurologist now and a cardiologist now and she's doing all these things. And she's been off for a month and she's already gained back a, a fair amount of the pounds. And so it's like a heartbreak because I feel like people aren't learning. They're not learning. They're, not learning. Yeah. they're like loving the results. And I mean, I, I would too, who wouldn't? But then they're not really like learning the right way to be i mean that's why i think you're right the cgm cgm am i saying that right yeah Yeah. Yeah. um so so helpful you know and so my question too about about that like as far as lifestyle um is there a component to um the cgm with january ai is there something that educates users around healthy lifestyle because like you just explained you know people are coming to you and saying like oh well i have orange juice and toast and it's like well right you have yeah, this information. So there are five, there are basically, there, there are a number of things that we look at in the January um, product. So one of the first things is spiking foods. Like what is the biggest culprit? What's spiking your food more than anything else? And what January can do that no one else can do. None of our so-called competitors. We don't really have a competitor because we are an AI company and we are not just an AI app company, but any of the people that are essentially selling uh, companion apps to CGM, None of them can do this, which is to tell you ahead of time how you might um, actually uh, react to a food. So without eating it, without having to eat it first. So basically, when we look at your spiking foods, we can give you alternatives to those foods without you eating those. So we can say, okay, A is not great for you, but here's B and C and D that are better for you that are similar to this food. So we're able to recommend alternatives. Um, So that's one thing that we do. So you can essentially slowly dial yourself down from, let's say, blueberry yogurt down to maybe vanilla yogurt with blue fresh blueberries and maybe eventually to plain yogurt to with blueberries if you can hack your food slowly walk off the ledge you know slowly slowly by modifying your food and retrain that palate then then we have done our job so that's one of the things we do the okay. second thing we do is we we try to get you to eat more fiber so we track how much fiber you're eating and we tell you hey eat more fiber because, you know, men are supposed to eat like 30 to 38 grams of fiber a day and women 21 to 25 grams of fiber a day. And most people are getting 10 to 15 grams at best if they're eating enough fruits and vegetables. So we really want them to eat a lot more fiber. It keeps them full. It reduces their um, snacking and also lowers their blood sugar. It's well known in the literature Mm -hmm. that it, it does that. And then we also try to limit the window in which people are eating you know so we kind of meet them where they are at first we try to look at see if they're you know fasting eight hours eating 16 hours some people eat all the way until they fall asleep you know they they're eating i mean i interview i talk to a lot of people they say it's routine people tell me jokingly oh my husband and i take a bowl of x to bed i swear to god people tell me oh we eat ice cream we have we have chips we eat fruit we take a bowl of watermelon um (sighs) Or in their say, bed? Uh, in their bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh you're, my you're basically not... diabetic overnight. I mean, they, yeah. they, oh they my say, God. I always drink. I always drink a warm glass of milk before bed because I'm like, okay, if you want to pee all night and not sleep, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. you can do that. But I think, so we try to limit the number of, 
um, hours in which people are eating. You know, try to encourage them to yeah. eat in a smaller, smaller window. Like myself, I eat between 12 and 7. That's kind of how I eat. Sometimes if like today I had to eat at 11.30, well, I'll, I'll eat at 4.30 or 5, and then I won't eat yeah. again. So that's really important. The other thing we do is we try to restrict calories. So if someone for their level of movement, like, you know, I'm ashamed to say it, but I don't move that much because I work a lot. And so if you're, if you have a, you know, your calories need to be in line with your level of movement. So we try to understand where people's um, sort of basic metabolic rate is and what their level of activity is and sort of tell them, Hey, your allotted calories are about this. So like, today and if they work out we increase the number so that yeah. they can't maintain their weight and not sort of go through these increases um and then we try to get them to move so we try to get them to move um get into the habit of moving the app tries to get them to dial their lifestyle that way we also try to get them to sleep more and we try to get them not to sleep to eat close to bedtime so yeah. we want to try to get our users or our members to have it at least a three-hour gap between their last meal and sleep. And somebody who wears a, a, a great aura um, wearer told me, uh, Nusheen, it's not only about last meal sleep gap, but it's also about the last last drink sleep gap. Yeah. <laughs> that too, that exactly. too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are now saying, hey, you know, drink at lunchtime, don't drink at night because you're not gonna yeah. sleep well or drink on the weekends yeah. Uh, yeah. at lunch because <laughs> you can't, you know, it's right. true. It's, it's true. true. It's and, and exercise too. So like, how, so how does um, the CGM differentiate between those different sources of, of glucose in the body and those spikes between like food, exercise, stress, like how does it interpret that? Or, or well, like it, it, uh, it, it, so if you do have a big workout, you will have a big glucose spike because your body um, produces energy for that workout. So you get on a bike for two hours. So one thing that's really, really important to understand is that it is, it is not bad to have a glucose spike. You know, if you're, if you're metabolically fit and you're an athlete and you, you just go for a, you know, 70 mile bike ride, you know, okay, you're going to have lots of glucose. You're going to take a lot of carbohydrates to keep yourself going. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think if your body is metabolically fit, it knows very well how to go from fast to fed. It knows how to distribute energy and dispense energy extremely efficiently. The problem is when you're not metabolically fit and you're and half of the adult US population is not metabolically fit. Fact, it just isn't. So if you're not metabolically fit, you want to limit your, your glucose spikes. You don't want to have huge, but of course, glucose spike from a workout very welcome. Glucose spike from a food, not welcome. Wow. I think that, that we found that I, I'm <clears throat> sitting next to someone who's very metabolically fit and I am not metabolically fit. I think we can agree. But I think we saw the difference when we wore. Yes. We saw the difference between the two of us. Yeah. Well, not only that, but but also just, um, you know, that that whole idea of metabolically fit, you know, having a having a flexible metabolism, being able to shift from burning carbohydrates versus burning fat, right? That's super, super important. But what we found or what what I found was that looking at the food that I was eating and how I was reacting, um, I was really able to kind of stabilize my my blood glucose, but it was when I was under stress, yeah. the uncontrollable that. stress that I would see these spikes. And I'm like, what is happening? I don't even know what's happening. Yeah. And yeah, it's it, your mind. It's yeah. your mind. That was it's fascinating mind, yeah. to me. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, yeah, your blood glucose level is highly dependent on how much fiber you have in your body, how stressed you are, how much you're thinking, how much you've slept. And also your activity and food. It is not just activity and food. It's dependent on all those other things. Right. For sure. And, right. and like you said, there's a there's a positive aspect to the spiking or there's yeah. a, you know, versus uh, spiking from eating a glass of orange juice or drinking a glass of orange, orange juice. juice. And um, the idea you had said to me, like the idea is to keep it at an even level throughout the day. Is that well, the it, upshot? More or less. More or less. I don't think you want to keep it. It's okay for it to go up and down. Seriously. It, it's more about the area under the curve i understand we're not looking at a slide so we can't imagine that but it the area under the curve is what matters like if it goes up does it come right down or is it like not coming down and it's kind of you have excess glucose sitting in your blood and it's just 
Um, so you can you can try that. You can put a CGM on, go eat something very sugary, um, and you can see that if you're not metabolically fit, you can see that your glucose goes up and then it just doesn't come down. It's kind of it it comes down, but like not doesn't go straight down. It just goes kind of sideways, and that's how you can see the difference between someone who has, for example, prediabetes and just healthy. You can see that a healthy person's glucose goes right down because they have just the amount of insulin to give, to put out, to meet that glucose and take care of it. And then, um, but, you know, if you're not metabolically fit, sometimes, um, sometimes you don't, sometimes the issue is the pancreas. Sometimes it's, it's not all about glucose. It's about insulin production of your body as well. It's critically important. If someday we could have continuous insulin tracker, that would be uh, truly game changing. But we that don't. Was my, that was my we next question. Yeah. One side of it. I, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, you know, obviously insulin plays a role. It's the other side of the Huge coin, role. sort of. Yeah, um, I think you should invent that machine. I, I know. Think that's that, your next. I have a feeling that gonna, it might be it would, down the. <laughs> it would take a knowledgeable, dedicated people about 10 years to do it. Um, to do it. Wow. Maybe, maybe seven years, but um, it really is one of the most underdeveloped things in the world. Like it, we should have continuous insulin. We should also have continuous cortisol, which I think we will, because once you can track people's cortisol, so you can see how stressed they are and you can see what's stressing them out during the day. You can see on, on their calendar, like who they meet with and yeah. how they're you it's know, so funny that socially. the, the mm -hmm. topic of cortisol and that has come up a lot um, between you and I. It, my dog has cortisol issues as well. <laughs> yeah, it's such an important. I I don't I don't think I really even knew about it, but it's so important to how you function in the world. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, kind of diving into I had recently um, gone through a certification course in hormone health and talking about women's hormones and your adrenals and how when you are starting to, you know, produce less of your sex hormones and your adrenals are taking over for that. And, and what I found in doing some testing of my own, now I am my own like biggest guinea pig, like she's, even with the she's CGM. She's also her, her own doctor as well. Well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to be. I'm, an ad, I'm worth an advocate. I'm worth an advocate for myself versus. But um, and one of the things Perfect. I did with the CGM that, you know, was I was really trying to manipulate it um, with my exercise and my diet. And like you're talking about, like watching it spike up and then th like. So, for instance, when I was saying about the, the stress level, my stress level and my insulin, I mean, I'm sorry, my glucose was um, spiking. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this deep breathing meditation right now and I'm going to bring this down. And so I just think it's so important and I, it's so – it's like – it's so important that we educate people on not only what are these numbers that you should be looking at, but then how do you make those positive changes? You know, that's the whole thing, right? It's like we want to prevent disease. We want to, you know, not have to keep treating things and treating symptoms. And I just think that you're right. Like, insulin, cortisol. I mean, I did a, um, I did a full panel hormone test just to kind of see, um, where my levels were at. And, and it turned out my cortisol was very, um, it was, you know, high in the morning as it should be. Right. But then it was really, really taking like a sharp nosedive quicker than it should have, um, during the middle of the day. So I'm still trying to figure out, okay, what is in my control? How can I balance that? Um, is it hormone replacement? Is it, you know, what do I do? But, um, Absolutely. right. I mean, I yeah. think that's, that's so important, but also you mentioned the wearables. Now, what other, um, CGMs could, uh, how can CGMs be used with these wearable devices? You mentioned Aura. Is there a connection there with the Aura? Yeah, ring? there's a connection. Yeah, there's a connection. Um, one of the ways that uh, essentially we combine data um, from Aura, like from your your sleep and heart rate. Um, so, for example, if you wear a CGM and you wear an Aura ring um, uh, and a CGM from January, you're able to see your fasting period automatically. So you're able to see, you don't have to really log your food. If you wear those two, you can see, um, how much you're fasting and how much you're, you know, how much you're, um, eating. You can see that in January. Uh, we'd love to see that in Aura as well. Uh, Aura has, um, uh, they did announce a partnership with us and Super Sapiens and Very a few months ago. Um, ah. I can send you that that information yeah. so 
uh, currently they are pulling CGM data into into Aura through Apple HealthKit, but we think there's another layer that that Aura can offer, hopefully in the future, where you can have that data show up in Aura so that you could see your blood sugar in Aura um, as well um, and be, be able to see not just your blood sugar, which you could, but also be able to see your fasting period. You could also be able to see your last meal sleep gap. So you today Aura says, hey, uh, you didn't sleep so well. Could it be that you ate something um, too late? Could it be that you had a heavy meal or you did some big activity? Well, if you use these things in combination, the 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 smartwatch will tell you um, whether you're active or not. So you can again, again without tracking anything. If you wear the two of them, it will tell you if you're you didn't sleep because you were active or because you ate late. Oh, interesting. Wow. Okay. What you ate. I think yeah. I have to wear the CGM again because I didn't I did have too, it because I didn't have the aura ring then. Right. Neither yeah. did I. Yeah. And how long, Nushin, do, should someone wear the CGM for? Is it a, is it a couple of weeks? What, what's the time frame? I think I would love to see the same way that people took, you know, 30 million people took a, a 23andMe test or like an Ancestry test. I'd love to see 30 million people throw on a CGM at least once. I mean, if people just did it one time, they would have so many learnings from that single wear. I think that would be really amazing. Um, but in terms of, you know, if you're a healthy person, a couple of times a year is a really good idea. Um, I think if you're uh, someone with prediabetes, maybe wear it four times a year, you know, once a quarter, see how you're doing. If you have type 2 diabetes, I would wear it also once a quarter, maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe maybe six times a year. But you don't have to wear it, you know, 26 you know, times. You don't have to wear it 52 weeks because with AI – you don't need to. If you tell us what you're eating, we'll tell you how you're responding. So yeah. you don't need yeah. to actually stick it in of your course. mouth. That's the beauty. Then that's why we want to get more people wearing CGMs because then, you know, the AI will do the rest. They don't, they don't have, they shouldn't think about this one time, huge commitment of dollars. They should think of a small commitment of dollars and then they're able to get this great information on an ongoing basis. So that's kind of what we're hoping. Yeah. yeah it's so interesting how we have all these things now to take care of ourselves, you know, and, but it's just a really matter of understanding what all the numbers mean. Yeah. You think about how much people spend on the outside beauty, you know, they spend so much for a purse, they spend so much for shoes, they spend so much for this dinner, for theater, but think about how little these things cost, like an Apple watch costs, you know, I don't know, 400 bucks and, or a ring costs 400 bucks and they, they last, you don't have to throw them out when they don't have fashion. Exactly. Yes. They eventually two, three years later, they get obsoleted, but you can go on a program with Apple Watch and, you know, not, you know, you can pay very little to upgrade. So I think if we if we have a broader sense of beauty and we have a broader sense of beauty that includes like feeling good and yes, just, yes, yes. Um, I think we would make different choices. And I think we would, you know, that glucose score, that sleep score would be what you would want to, you know, compete on as opposed yeah, to... Yeah, those are the things that, that you the, want to focus other on. Yeah. It's so... The it's, beauty inside. When people say people are beautiful inside and out, to be beautiful inside, that's really what it's well, all about. Well, even just to, you know, to <laughs> kind of rearrange your priorities, it's like, well, you, you know, mm. this idea of longevity and long-term health, and it's like, but you yet you walk around completely oblivious to what you're putting in your body, what you're putting on your body, how your body's reacting to all of those things, and it's like... You wouldn't have to spend maybe no. all the money on cosmetic surgery if you were putting the correct things in yeah. your body to make you, you know, look healthy and look totally. good from, you know, the totally. inside out. But um, Absolutely. Yeah. If people believe for the best skin, they should worry about, you know, uh, the right cream, uh, the right skincare regimen and seeing the right dermatologist and yes. and all of that and having the right facialist. Well, what about glycation? I mean, you premature, like if you you're not doing the right thing with your blood sugar you're aging yourself sure yeah, um, yeah. and wh- how where does that come in and by the way if you do a good job at that it has a lot of other benefits besides a good skin sure you know you can't tell i'm 75 right i'm just kidding <laughs> i was like i'm like <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> I am. I'm I definitely. Am up there, excuse me. I have to go put the CGM on. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I do think CGMs help beauty. I do. I do yeah. help. I do think that they help a great, you know, have greater awareness around keeping, yeah. you know, yeah, managing. Well, it, it, Right. It, may, it just makes you more aware, I think, of what you're putting in your body and yeah. how your body's reacting to, the, to those things. And, you know, the, the insulin response, too. I mean, so many people, I mean, you just talked about the stats for diabetes, but I mean, even just insulin sensitivity, you know, people that are, yeah. and I, I, I would, I hope that there is a future to, to that, you know, monitoring and measuring. And I, I think that's a big, that goes a long way with with weight loss and weight management and goes hand in hand, obviously with CGM. Do you, do you get user feedback, um, like real world usage and how is that influenced in any of like the refinements of the CGM system? Yeah, we definitely do. We have had a big, um, user review program, um, for many years, actually. Um, it has definitely refined what we do. So for example, um, we built our product for more for people with prediabetes. Um, and we had, uh, you know, people who really needed to, and so we have, we had medication tracking, we had all of this stuff and the people who showed up the door were optimizers. So we, once we like interviewed, like three fourths of them were really optimizers, maybe one fourth of them, um, had diabetes or prediabetes. So it was like, oh, wow. Okay. Um, so we learned, for example, that people did not want a product that was, necessarily uh, branded or positioned as for disease. They are not interested in that. They are interested in aspirational products, you know, the way kind of Nike makes shoes for athletes and then everybody else wears them. So they're like, sometimes when you interview people, they say, you say, well, have you ever been diagnosed with diabetes? They say, yes, but I reversed it. You know, they <laughs> quickly want to tell you like, you know, like, okay, right. I don't have it. I, don't yeah. I had it, but I don't have it. I don't have it. It's like, okay, okay, great, great. So I think we learned that, oh, unfortunately, there's a stigma around it. There shouldn't be. I think people, there shouldn't I think be. If, yes. if the doctor tells you you have diabetes, my answer is good. Now you will take care of yourself. Now you will actually, now from this moment on, you will actually be a better, healthier version of yourself. It's so true. You yes. need something forward. to go so own it, wrong. Own, own it and just work on it. Just yeah. Work on 100%. it. hundred percent. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. We all have it. We all have, I mean, 60% of Americans have at least one chronic condition. So yeah. we all have, we, most of us yeah. have one. Yeah. So, and that's part you know, of the problem. Let's be open it, about it. Right. Let's, I think let's, that's, let's work yeah. on it. Part right. of the problem is that people don't want to acknowledge it and they don't want to sure. talk about it. And it's like, you're, well, you're kind of making it worse because, yeah. you know, you need to be aware and then do the things to get yeah. better. You know, right. it's totally. Um, no, we've interviewed people who say, you know, I have diabetes, but I haven't told anyone. So it's just something I carry on my own. So um, I don't go out to dinners with people because I can't eat what they can't eat. And we're just like, this is oh my so goodness unfortunate it's so sad yeah. you know do tell people and tell them hey can we go here or can we cook at home can it can we all do this together so that i can eat better let's all you know and then we'll go out but then before i go out i'll eat something and then you know and i think people all want to help each other so if we just open well, up they do that's what i was going to say i think also by someone sharing that um, and being vulnerable, it opens the door for a connection to somebody else right. that may be going through the same thing or may have symptoms and not know, you know, so right. it just opens that conversation. I think that's so important. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask you, are there other um, resources or, or support for uh, users of the CGM system? Like, are there communities or, or uh, social media groups or anything like that where people can get more education and be around, you know, um, other people that are using CGM? You know, we're not running a big, um, I know some of the other companies that are in this uh, area have uh, online communities. Um, we don't have a big online community, unfortunately, um, uh, we should. Uh, I think it's important that we will talk. But there are, um, there, are, um, there are really, really big groups. The biggest group is beyond, beyond type 1. I realize it's for type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. But it is, it has millions of followers beyond type one and they're in all over various, um, they're all over various social media and, you know, people with type one, you know, they're born with it. And so they do own it. They say, Hey, I have it. Um, you know, I want to work on it. Can other people help me? And so I think there are a lot of lessons in that and just being, being open about it. So there are all sorts of resources from recipes to like, you know, but of course, um, type one folks, uh, some are using, um, well, 
they are getting help with insulin because they, they don't make insulin um, for the most part. And advanced type twos also may not be making insulin themselves. So they are getting help as well. So there is, there is help. Um, that is a really, really big community there. But I think that, you know, getting healthy and getting healthy blood sugar uh, is as simple as the things we've talked about. It's as simple as limiting the number of hours during yeah. which you eat. It's as simple as keeping your number of amount of consumption aligned with the amount of activity that you're doing and not going over that. Just understanding how many, you know, like, have you guys uh, done DEXA scan? No. No. Okay, I don't even know what that is. Okay. De- DEXA scan. Okay. You must do a DEXA scan. Yeah. So it's just a scan of your body. It actually um, not only gives you your body fat, which other things can too, you know, you can get your body fat from immersion or there are all these other things you use. No, I get my body fat from looking in the mirror. Yeah. No, (laughs) seriously. DEXA scan actually gives you the level of visceral fat that you have, like how much fat is also sitting on your like organs. Yes. And you really want to know that. So for me, I know I really need to keep my calories down it's just fact. It's just something I know because until you change your body composition. So if you spend the time and you build muscle, which is if you're, if your listeners can learn one thing from this call is like work on your body composition, yes. <laughs> get more Pro- muscle, increase yeah, your protein muscle, and start, muscle, muscle. you know, build, uh, muscle, build yeah. your muscle. lean. Say the habits that are important for managing your blood sugar, just a few, uh, the yeah. ones that we yeah. mentioned, okay. you know, eat a lot of fiber, Keep your calories limited to your number of yeah. amount of activity. Um, you know, eat in a small window. Move after you eat, and definitely check out those spiking foods and hack those. You know, either yeah. eliminate them, cut them in half, replace Amazing. ingredients. Just hack those. Sorry, and wear a CGM. And no, wear no. a CGM. I said and wear a CGM <laughs> so that you know. No, I was just asking you about the DEXA scan. Does that also do bone density? Yeah. It does. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would do it right away. Yeah. It's fab- fabulous. They have. They have mobile trucks that go around. Yeah, um, I've you can seen also that. Go to their office. Yeah, and it's very simple, and it's not very expensive. And then you're like, oh, oh, I see. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I know what I. It, it's just I think more I'd be afraid. <laughs> it's just yeah. more information, right? Yeah. And it's and yeah. it's it's you know again depending on your goals, and obviously it's to prevent disease, to stay healthy. For some right. people, it's to lose weight, but whatever it is, it's like you need to know where you're right. at, where you're starting from in order to improve, right? You, right. you need to uh, have that information. But um, this was really, really great. Very I, informative. I right. really enjoyed this. Thank you so much and so um, just joining us. Um, you know, I, I did want to mention one thing because I do, I follow January AI on social media, on uh, Instagram, and you guys do a really great job of um, – kind of showing the the process of, you know, putting it on and and how it works and all of those things. But how can our listeners learn more about January AI and the CGM system? Where can they go? Yeah. So, uh, so go to January.ai, our website. And um, we're also, you know, if anybody wants to reach out to us on like either social media or reach out to me on LinkedIn, I'm also happy to we do a lot of times we get on the, you know, on text with people and say, how's it going? They're like, why is this up? Why is this down? And we just, we, we try to be as helpful and as useful as we can. So um, check us out uh, at January AI and also on social media and feel free to reach out to me, Nushin Hashemi on LinkedIn. We'll make sure <laughs> yes. to, we'll link everything right. in the show notes. Nushin will link the yeah. um, uh, January AI and the CGM yeah. and, um, you know, your information, obviously all of that, but, um, yeah, this was, this yeah, was really was very interesting. Yeah. Thank, thank you so, you so much, much for being here. Thank it's you for our pleasure, being truly. here. We learned a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having me. And, um, anytime I'm, I'm here, just, you have a question, <laughs> awesome. Oh, we it. will. We will. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. We just okay. learned all about, Glucose, I learned that I could go have a test to see how much fat I have and not <laughs> <laughs> just look in the mirror like I feel like I did. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, um, you know, I really loved what she was saying and I'd love to like, um, you know, dive deeper into the research on like insulin and how to, because yeah, there are really ways, like yeah. there definitely, I feel like I've seen. Well, diabetics keep track of well, their yeah, insulin, yeah, yeah. don't they? Well, that's what the glucose yeah, so she does. does. That's yeah. what CGM does. Yeah. Um, but but as far as like actually testing the insulin, um, you know, that would be interesting to know just for right. people, especially for, you know, for weight loss. But, but yeah, she was, she was really, yeah, really great. Really she's sweet got such and a, nice. like, 
her background. I, I mean, know. It's like coming from that and then just, I don't know, people help. It's, it just shows like all roads are leading to just le- leading like a healthy life healthy in the life. best way, yeah. using all the tools that you can to figure that out. Yeah. And there are a lot of tools out there, but I think yeah. people don't either don't know. No, and no. the thing is too, like these aren't expensive things. Like she mentioned, no. it's not, you're not spending thousands and thousands of dollars. Or a lifestyle that. Yeah. Works for you. So we hope you guys again always we, we we have learned a lot doing this podcast. I know. <laughs> so many things. It's great. Um but anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Lori Schulz. And I'm Jen Giamo. And this was Everybody Talks. Talk to you soon. Jen, I have noticed your new favorite wearable device. And you like that it kind of doubles as jewelry, right? But what does it do? Well, if you're talking about my aura ring, it tracks your heart rate, activity levels, body temperature, sleep cycles, heart rate variability, and your training frequency to tell you if you're hitting your goals and to make sure that you're giving your body enough recovery time. So it helps you really tune in to what your body is telling you and when to push it and when to take it easy with your workouts? Yes, it actually gives you a readiness score, taking into consideration over 20 different body signals to tell you how ready you are for the day. What else does it do? Not everyone needs this one, but Aura learns your unique menstrual cycle by monitoring your temperature trends which rise and fall due to the changes in your hormones throughout the month, for some people. (laughs) For more information or to purchase Aura Ring at a discounted rate, visit everybodytalkspodcast.com backslash sponsors. For more information about the podcast, to learn more about us, and to catch up on all of our episodes, go to our website at everybodytalkspodcast.com. Follow us on Instagram at Jen Giamo, at Shilly, or at Everybody Talks. And if you want to watch today's episode, tune into our YouTube channel at Everybody Talks Podcast. And don't forget, if you like what you've heard, give us a five-star rating, write a review, and tell a friend. We're for everybody and every body. The Everybody Talks Podcast is co-created, executive produced, and hosted by us, Lori Schulweis and Jen Giamo. Produced and edited by Eric Jackowitz. Our theme song music is written and performed by Jackie Ryle and Aaron Navizi, with additional support from our pops, Oliver, Milo, and Murray. Talk to you next time.